Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Glad you're here. Uh, so, one of the things I ask for is suggestions in the comments. Uh, I want to hear, you know, what would you like me to react to? Point me out to stuff I've never heard before. Uh, stuff you may have never heard before. Or so I can point it out to you and you can point it out to me. Or just finding all this new music and enjoying it. So... I did have a request. Uh, this one actually came in kind of a surprise because it came in from a video I did, um, I think, a little bit over a month ago um, when I was looking at uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard and um, Hellbent for Leather. And I got a comment on it actually this week. And the Toad Dick saying I'm a huge uh, RWH fan, Robert uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard fan. And I never heard this song. So awesome. I'm glad I found that for you, man. That's awesome. Uh, but you got to do Mother Blues. It's his crazy life story. Tag me when you post. So I'm going to tag you, Toad Dick. Um, and we're going to check this out. So uh, I have, like I said, I ran across Ray Wiley Hubbard the first time. Um, he, he appeared as an alt country in, um, in the country top 40 or top 50 i think for that week um and everybody's telling me he's not all country he's you know country or he's oppie style or he's this or he's that whatever i just went by what was listed uh i don't i don't get <laughs> too particular about genres or sub genres but uh but he was good that hellbent for leather was a uh, was a really good song so i'm excited about this one uh, i found this song over at a joint called music fog highly recommend it recommend it uh i was able to like look around their channel a little bit um and these guys get uh uh just artists to come in and they record there and uh they do a lot of americana americana funk is is kind of what they say on their channel and uh like a lot of guys you're probably not even guys guys girls bands that you've never heard of Looks like they're doing a lot of country, uh, old country, new country, uh, blues. Um, where I think there was some rockabilly in there, and just a bunch, you know, a bunch of like Americana songs that are uniquely American, and um, and and just putting and just pumping that music out. Um, this one is actually 11 years old. It has over a million views on it, so it's, so it is popular, which which kind of surprised me because I didn't think that uh, that uh, he was that well known, but apparently few of you have heard of them so we're gonna check this out this is called mother's blues by ray wiley hubbard please jab that like button hit subscribe comment below let me know what you think and if you have other genres other music other artists that you want me to check out please drop me a line and let me know i'd love to hear it and uh i'd love to do it because i got stuff that i want to do but i'm always going to listen to your suggestions first so without any further ado here's ray wiley hubbard mother's blues We've got some people from all over the world here in different uh, areas, so we'll uh, kind of, this might kind of explain a little bit about who I am, maybe. And I was 21 years old, y'all. All I wanted was a stripper girlfriend and a gold top of Les Paul. <laughs> Be careful of the things you wish for. You might get them. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> there was a nightclub in Dallas. It's called Mother Blues. It's well, Lightning Hopkins played, and Freddie King even paid some dues. And all the dealers and gamblers and young white hipsters, they all made the scene. The girl at the door who checked IDs was. Just 16. Okay, first of all, the music is fantastic. If you can take two instruments and just create that sound, you don't need everything else. He doesn't have a bass player. He doesn't have a keyboardist. He doesn't have a rhythm guitar. It's just him and this drummer, and uh, it sounds great. That's that's really a lot what the blues is about. Um, you don't see a lot of blues bands that are four, five, six, seven-piece bands. Uh, usually... It's a drummer, a guitarist, and a bassist, if that. Um, 
So, sounds great already. His voice is just awesome for this. The uh, but man, I'll tell you where the talent really is. Here is is in his lyrics. Like he just paints a picture. This this mother's blue joint in, in mother's mother mother blues joint in Dallas, Texas. You know, however long ago, 20, 40 years ago, um, just sounded like a place when I was 20 years old. That's where I wanted to be hanging out with the gamblers and the dealers and the young white hipsters. I wasn't a hipster, but uh, just sounds like that sounds like a place where you get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> it was not a place for law abiding citizens. <laughs> Jackie Jones, he had him a habit He just couldn't stop He'd give me $500 And I'd sell you my last Paul Gold Top I drove my daddy's car down to Ross Avenue And I sold it I guess I should have told him And looted to the police that someone stole it <laughs> It was just the first of many bad decisions I was to make for the next 40 years. Ah, oh, but I, I had me a guitar. Well, I tell you what, you people being here looking at you, and looking at each and every one of you, I know that you understand that the real nightlife begins after the club's closed. Yeah, the after party. All after hours. After hours, yep. So there I was, 21 years old, and I had me this guitar, and there was this club called Mother Blues, and I'd go over there and hang out. And this is what happened one night. At 2 a.m. and everybody's gone, but the band, the dealers, and Jack Jones. Let me tell you something. If you've never been to the after hours party, like, that's 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 when it's real. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to be a bartender in my twenties at several different joints around South Carolina, in Columbia, in a small town called Barnwell. Barnwell, and uh, at two o'clock, that's when everybody, when all the other restaurants were shut down, and all the bartenders from the other joints would come to our place, or we'd shut down early. We'd all shut down at two o'clock and we'd go to another bar. There was always a bar in town somewhere where all the other bartenders from all the other places went at two o'clock and you didn't have a bunch of customers in there. All the customers are gone. They got run out and you're behind locked doors. And you, some of the most fun times I've ever had is after two o'clock in the morning. And it's not, and it's not about, getting wild or getting crazy but that's when everybody hanging out is friends that's when everybody has, has had a day and now they're relaxing and those are some of the coolest moments you've ever had if you've never had it i feel for you and the girls from the landing strip club come over after they put their clothes back on so i'm at my blues and i'm sitting on an amp i'm playing twist and shout this tall drink of water walk in Look like she might have to shoot her way out <laughs> She come up to me and says You know anything good on that guitar? I didn't say nothing, I just kept on playing She said, you ever heard this song called Poke Sally Danny? I just kept on playing that guitar She said, every time I hear that song My insides feel like warm butter And I just, I just want to take off my clothes And dance around in my underwear I said, uh, down in Louisiana, <laughs> where the alligator grows so mean. And, yeah, I know I'm not too proud of myself. <laughs> so we hit it off. We hit it off, me and this dancer. We did. We hit it off like a, like a, like a metaphor. Like a metaphor for a hydrogen bomb. We was in rich uranium, supercritical mass. We was a, a chain reaction. It was a love and lust, I mostly lust, but a mutual attraction. So there I was, boys, at 21 years old. I had it all. I had me a fine strip of girlfriend and a gold top Les Paul. 
This guy can tell a story, man. Holy cow. It's just... <laughs> this is awesome, man. Hey. <laughs> All right, you gotta tell me what you think below. Please comment on this, man. You gotta tell me you're enjoying this as much as I am, because this guy is just—he paints pictures of where he's at. He—he's—he's he's painting pictures of the people he meets. He doesn't even have to describe them. He doesn't even have to tell you skin color, hair color, eye color, how tall, how short, how whatever. He just—he just gives you a description. She came in, walking into the bar, a tall cool of water. Walked into this bar, looked like she was going to have to shoot her way out. That's all you need to know. You, in your mind, you just pictured your, your, uh, your drop dead blonde or your, or your red hot redhead or whatever it is that like, when you see it, you're just like, you pictured it immediately. He didn't have to describe that to you. And then <laughs> they hit it off like a metaphor, <laughs> like a metaphor for a hydrogen bomb. Got it. Understood completely, bro. Like that's that's storytelling right there, man. That is that's one reason why I love the blues. I can't take a lot of the blues, but people that write the blues, people that do it well, they can just give you these images without being particular. And you have to formulate it in your head. And for everybody it's different. Everybody gets a completely different picture in their head, but they all know like that's what he wants us to see. And that's what we see. And that's what he saw. And so we completely get it. It's awesome. Ah, the future, it looked promising. But there were dark clouds on the horizon. No. She was a beautiful girl, but she liked to drink tequila and take two and alls. And I come home four or five times and she'd been drunk Paul molest Paul. Oh. So we broke up and she went to Hollywood. She married her an actor. She got a job dancing on the Hudson Brothers TV show and modern lipstick for Max Factor. I'm glad she done all right. I really am. You know, I got over and I'm glad she kind of got things together, you know. And like I say, I, I'm glad she done all right. Yeah, now me. I never busted through the gates into the big time as a rock and roll star. For 40 years, I just carried around an old gold top guitar. But love and fate are mysterious things in this, in this funky old world. You see, it was 20 years ago in February, I married that Mother Blues door girl. <laughs> That is brilliant. You know exactly who he's talking about, right? The 16-year-old? Because she stood out in your mind when he, when he, when he described Mother's Blues, right? It's where, all the, it's where all the dealers and where all the gamblers and where all the, all the young white hipsters hung out. And at the front door was a, a 16-year-old girl. And, and you're like, okay, it's not, a place, it's not a place for reputable people to be hanging out, but here's this girl. And then he marries her. That's awesome. That's just full circle brilliance. I love it. And it's a boy, and he's 17 years old now, and he's playing guitar. And kind of the reason I wrote this song is, uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to hang his life on a guitar or not. You know, he plays guitar. He's my full-time guitar player when he's not in school or he gets grounded. <laughs> but, uh, the reason I wrote this song was about six, seven months ago, Tony Joe White called me up, and he said, Ray, I hear your boy playing guitar on your new record. And him playing the lead guitar on Wasp's Nest and Pots and Pants, and I said, yes, sir, it is. And he said, we're not him playing on the old guitar on that other record that you had before that? And I said, yes, sir, and not him playing guitar on the song Wasp's Nest? And I said, yeah, that's him playing guitar. And he said, well, you tell that boy that he playing the bona fide blues and the rock and roll truth, and that made me feel good. It really did, you know. So I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for you people coming out here today. And I'm very honored and grateful to share the stage with Rick Richards right there. I tell you what, just laying it down. You know, here I am, I'm this old cat, but I'm very, like I say, I'm very grateful I can write these old songs and run around the world and play them and have a pretty good time. And uh, I got some good things. It, it just struck me. <laughs> he looks like 
a cross between John Lennon and oh, what's his name? The dude from Grateful Dead. Ah, his name just flew out of my head. Uh, you know who I'm talking about? The guitarist for Johnny Garcia. Garcia. He looks. He looks like a cross between Garcia and John Lennon, if they had a baby, and just as much talent. I do. Uh, I love, I'm in love with this guy, man. This guy's awesome. I, lo- I need to listen to a lot more of his stuff. Things going on right now. So I'm very grateful. And the days that I keep my gratitude higher than my expectations, I have really good days. Good days. Thank you very much, Mr. Rick Richards. Thank you. Brilliant. Just brilliant. I, I love that cat, man. Uh, what a great song! Just uh, what a great like, yeah, like what a great song. You can you can you have a happy ending, which for the blues is not, is unusual. You don't get a lot of happy endings in 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 the blues. But I love the way he tells that story. I could listen to that story a million times. Uh, and the, and in the end, he got the girl. He got his son. He got, you know, he didn't get all that fame and recognition and, and, and break down and, you know, break through and become a rock star. But I, I tell you, when you're sitting there with 1.4 million views, um, you got recognition. You got respect. You got guys calling you up and telling you that your your son is killing it. And, uh, yeah, what more you got to be gra- gracious for? Man. What, do you, what more you have? Well, I mean, that's a lot of gratitude you got to have. And he, and he shows it. You can tell he loves telling that story and he loves playing it. And I love hearing it. So let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what you think about it. So give me a comment below. In the meantime, please press that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share this with your friends and complete strangers. And uh, you know we're going to be back to do it again in the meantime. Make sure you check out my other stuff over here. And uh, maybe some stuff you haven't heard before. Um, In fact, I know there's stuff in there you haven't heard before. So please check it out. And uh, we'll definitely see you next time. Love you guys. Bye.